Fish Podcast, The Beautiful Game of Life. Today we have Alexis Guerreros. Am I pronouncing that correctly? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Guerreros, one half, the better half of the soccer hooligans. Hey, I'm yeah. not going to say that, but thank you. Yeah. I did specifically ask you to say that, so I'm glad you said it. Sorry, Christian. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for joining us. Uh, do, you, do you mind uh, giving us a little bit of your background? Uh, me personally? Yeah. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Cuban. Um, grew up in uh, Newark, New Jersey. I don't know if you guys have ever purchased heroin before. Mm-hmm. Um, tough place. Uh, I moved to New York about 12 years ago. I uh, started stand-up uh, about 11 years ago. Um, you know, stand-up comic, professional, travel all over the world, um, which is dope. Five years ago, I started a soccer podcast with another comedian friend of mine named Christian Polanco. Uh, I'm Cuban. He's Dominican. Huge powerhouses in soccer. Uh, big, big. We've never played baseball before. We're just all we care about is soccer in both those countries. And uh, it was just because we were like trying to have fun and have a good time. And we got season tickets to MLS to uh, NYCFC because it's like a local team. And we're like, let's just get more into American soccer. You know, he was a big fan of Everton. I'm a big fan of Arsenal. So I was like, let's get more into the American game. And we decided to start a podcast around that because we were like, yo, no one else is doing this. No one had our voice. Like, there were no, like, New York-sounding voices. There were no hood voices. There was, like, no hip-hop references at all. When it came to American soccer, it was, like, very suburban. It was very sterile. And we're like, no, let's just do it ourselves because this is what I would want to listen to. And I had, like, visions of, like, oh, it'll be this and it'll be that. But I didn't think it would reach to now we have a television show. Mm-hmm. That's which awesome. Which is, yeah. I mean, How long, how long has it been, uh, have you guys been on? It's about four months now. Four months, okay. Yeah, Congrats. and we got renewed, so we're going to be mm-hmm. <laughs> we're sticking around, baby. That's, uh, that's great. Yeah, man, really excited and... You know, I as a comic, you want your stand-up to be the thing that you're most known for, yeah. right? Because the the rule in comedy is whatever you do the most, that's what you are. So if someone's like, "Well, I'm a I'm a comedian and an actor," which one do you do more? Because that's what you are. You're not a comedian; you're an actor who also does stand-up. It's like this thing we do to make sure that we're keeping stand-up as like the forefront because it's a it's you lose it if you don't do it. You know what right. I mean? Um, so like I always thought like comedy will take off and then I'll be able to do all these other passion projects right and soccer was something that I had as a passion project in my head I'm like I'm gonna find a way to make it a little bit cooler a little bit more fun a little bit funnier and uh, you know that's like they're both kind of like sort of surging at the same time which mm-hmm. I didn't expect and I'm really excited about what's what's the breakdown now for you between comedy right mm-hmm. and uh, soccer cool against the TV show well I mean <laughs> you know I two hours a week is all I have to do for the mm-hmm. show which okay. is dope and when I'm in New York it's a little harder to get stage time out here but when I'm in New York seven nights a week I perform it's even to, even now seven yeah, nights a week wow. absolutely I, I want to be schedule. on stage mm-hmm. all time Okay. That like I know people like sometimes after a show be like you're so brave, because like, I, I got up and made fun of you know. Mm-hmm. I, can I curse on this? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because I made fun of my dick. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like yeah. that's not that brave. You know what I mean? Like brave is, you know, is someone who is afraid to do it. Like that's when I'm most comfortable. Mm-hmm. I'm like I to me that's not brave at all. To me that's like this is, I get to be me. You know, like like Larry David right for Kirby Enthusiasm. He's like that's the person he wishes he could be. That's my stand up. I see. Like, I'll say the things that I, w- like, I know, like, and a lot of it is stuff I have said, but, like, I don't get to suffer the repercussions. An audience laughs. Mm-hmm. Like, in real life, I'll say something mean, and my wife is like, what the fuck? You know, mm-hmm. why would you say that to that person? You right. know, and I'm like, oh, I got to apologize now. So, like, on stage, everyone just laughs, and I get to move on, mm-hmm. you know? All right, awesome. So, on your show, all right, Soccer mm-hmm. Cooligans, um, you know, you focus on soccer, obviously, right? Yeah. Is there, do you have like a preference on like leagues out there? We talk a lot about MLS because mm-hmm. really no one else was. Uh, the goal was like, oh, we'll talk about MLS and they'll be like, yo, let's bring these guys in. That second part never happened. But <laughs> uh, the fans have sort of kind of connected with us. And mm-hmm. I think the, the issue with soccer in America, even if you're not a fan of MLS, if you're a fan of European League or any other league, um, it's always been a little DIY here. You know, like um, we had troops from Arsenal Fan TV on the show and he was talking about like, uh, you know, the media didn't like us because we were kind of doing what they were doing. It's like in America that that's not a thing. Right. Like the media is not really talking about soccer. So you if someone would start a fan thing, it would just seem like they had to do that. Mm -hmm. It it wouldn't seem like, oh, cool. We're getting the voice of the fans. You'd be like, well, there's there's no other voice. There's nothing else. So for us, it was like we'll talk about MLS because no one else was talking about it. And at first it was like an all. It was an all like we started out as an NYCFC podcast for like two episodes and we're like, let's expand. So we decided to do all soccer, all world soccer, anything that bubbled to the top. And then we realized there's a lot of people that are kind of popping in Europe. There's a lot of people that are popping in like other places. So why don't we do something that no one else is doing, which to us was MLS. So we kind of focus more on that. But I mean, at this point, the show has kind of become 
a podcast like a comedy podcast that's also about soccer mm -hmm. you know like when i mentioned at the end of the year i've tweeted out from the cooligans account what is the what is the event that or what is the moment that you think most encapsulates what cooligans is right. from the beginning to like the end of 2019 yeah and the overwhelming response was a story i told about almost getting arrested while taking a shit at lafc mm -hmm. Yeah, it's about soccer, but it's not. That was a story that you guys told. Yeah. That you told. I almost right. got arrested. Okay. Let's go While taking that. a shit <laughs> at LAFC. Right, LAFC okay. versus LA Galaxy, by the okay. way, which is like a huge game. So which which stadium were you at? I was at the bank. Okay. It was at LAFC Stadium. Mm -hmm. I well, They gave us press passes. Okay. And a homie of mine works for LAFC, and he was like, oh, we want to go to the field, right? We have press passes. Mm -hmm. We were up in the press box, and he was like, oh, just come this way. I'll show you a shortcut. So he takes us through the VIP lounge, which, by the way, is like a nightclub in there. It's like mm -hmm. gorgeous. Which, which uh, you're talking about like the like the Founders Club or I don't know what it is, <coughs> what it's called, okay. but it's like black and red lights in size, yeah. dope, right? Okay. And it's like you could see like the team walk to their to their mm -hmm. th like if you're like a high end spender, yeah. or like a yeah. suite, that's probably where you get drinks. Yeah, it's dope, right? And I noticed they had a bathroom in there, it's mm -hmm. right next to the tunnel. Yeah, yeah. So I'm like, all of a sudden, I have to take a shit. And there's a there's a thing that happens, and this is true. This happens every time. Okay. If I take a shit at your stadium, you, mm -hmm. the home team will score two goals. Okay. During it. All right. All it's right. pretty great. During. During it. Okay. I've had fans, when I walk into a stadium, yeah. beg me to take a shit in their stadium. Okay. Which is, what a life, right? right. Here right. I am. Right? Yeah. People are begging me to take a shit. I'm like, great. Yeah. I love it. I'm pretty regular, you know? My aunt always said, I'm like a duck. Call me caca. Call me caca. Which is like, you eat and you shit. You eat and you shit. I'm pretty regular, right? So I'm like, I'm probably going to shit in your stadium. And you're going to score two goals. You're welcome, you know? So, and it happened, by the way, when, during LAFC. But as I'm walking back into the tunnel, I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, there's a bathroom right here. There's a, one of the security guards, like, let me see your badge and I'm like yeah go ahead it's like stuck it's like a sticker it's stuck to my shirt and he's kind of staring at it and the woman is staring at it and I had seen them get yelled at like a moment before I walked in they were getting like talked like undressed mm -hmm. by like or dressed down I should say yeah. they were getting undressed yeah. they were making love right uh sweet sweet love and I interrupted right mm -hmm. and uh I was like I'll oil you up um so they were getting dressed down I like how you're a professional <laughs> uh they were getting dressed down by somebody and I don't know what it was for I later found out I think people had fake media sure, passes. Sure. And they caught a couple of people with okay. fake media passes. I clearly did not, right? Mm -hmm. I'm a media person, so the guy looks at it and he's staring right. at it. I'm like, dude, I gotta go to the bathroom. I'm like, you yeah. could look at this all you want. I, I'll take it off right. here. I'm gonna go take a shit. And the lady was like, yo, escort him to the bathroom. So I thought, oh, it's because it's VIP, right? So I go to the bathroom. It's like you, you have your own store. It's like a door, you know, like your own room. It's bigger than my whole bathroom at home, right? So I lock the door. I take my jacket off. I'm using the bathroom. Five minutes later, I hear bang, 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 bang. And I go, dude, someone's in here. And he's like, sir, you need to come out. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm taking a shit. Mm -hmm. Go use a different bathroom, you know? Mm -hmm. I didn't know it was a security guard. I just right. thought it was some dude being an asshole. Bang, 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 bang. You need to come out right now. Unlock the door. I'm like, no, I'm taking a shit. Like, dude, what don't you understand? <laughs> Dog, go find your own bathroom. <laughs> okay. And he's like, I'm security. If okay. you don't get out, I'm going to call the administrator wow. to unlock the door. I'm like, well, you come in here. Mm -hmm. You're both helping me wipe. I don't all know right. what to tell you, all right? right? Legitimately said all this to him. And he's like, well, I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling whatever, the administrators. So I was like, oh, right. I wipe as fast as I can, right? I wash my hands. I walk out, and I'm wearing a full tracksuit. I'm like the most New York dude right now. I'm wearing full-blown tracksuit. What color? It's black, white mm -hmm. stripes down the side. Okay. I'm zipped up to nice. the top. I walk out, and I go, what the fuck? I'm in my dude's <laughs> face. I go, who the fuck? Are you? I, the first dude I saw, I got in his <laughs> face. I go, dude, I'm taking a shit. Is this how you treat media people? Like, yeah. I'm, I was invited here by blah, 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 and I'm like, yeah. I'm getting in my man's face. And I see behind him like a young Latino dude who's like, hey, relax. And I was like, what the fuck is he tell me to relax? And then all of a sudden I see like seven police officers. Uh -huh. There's like four or five other security guards and there's two undercovers uh -huh. all in the bathroom. And I'm like, oh shit, like these dudes have their hands on their guns. Like this is for real. So I was like, yo, what the fuck's going on? We think you have a fake media pass. I was like, and? Yeah, yeah. I'm taking a shit. Who right. gives a fuck? Like, wait till I'm done. You know what I mean? And then you can escort me out of the building if you think it's fake. Okay. And they rip it off my shirt. And I see this redhead dude who works for the team. And I saw him in the press box. Mm -hmm. So I go, hey, yo, Red. I don't know my man's name. I'm like, mm -hmm. yo, Red. I'm like, I'm on seat 86, third row. My name is Alexis Guerrero. So the Cooligans. Mm -hmm. And I look at all the cops. I go, which, by the way, is a television show now. Mm -hmm. And guess what I'm going to be talking about this week. <laughs> right. right. And, like, the cops are kind of laughing because they know it's like, oh, shit. Like, yeah. he's not. He's not a fake pass. Anyway, long story short, the redhead guy comes back. He's like, hey, man, I'm really sorry about this. And I was like, yo, this is bullshit, dude. I'm trying to take a shit. Like, mm -hmm. what, if I, what if I have a problem? What if I have a physical problem and y'all just fucked? Like, I should be shitting on the floor right now. I'm like, got in my man's face. And like, I realized, like, all right, I'm done. I kind of did what I, what I came here to do. I walked past the undercover and I was like, man, I hope you're getting paid time and a half for this shit. And he's like, oh, what are you talking about? I'm waiting in line to use the piss for I'm like, 
Yeah. I was like, dude, I grew up in Newark. I know an undercover when I see one. Right. You're wearing a Dodgers jersey at a soccer game and it's mad bulky, dad <laughs> jeans, mad tight, and running shoes tied real tight. I'm like, dog, you s- undercover from the moment you got out of the car. Right. And the other undercover cop's like, I told you. I was like, nah. <laughs> I walked away. And then on the way back, the same security guard does this shit to Christian, my podcast partner. Mm-hmm. That's a fake badge. And we're like, again? I was like, dog, don't you remember me? Mm-hmm. And the guy, I think, was being a dick because I got in his face. All right. But that that story popped off it became like this whole because i we wouldn't normally we would tweet about it during the game or go on like instagram but we're like yo let's just keep it tight and save it for the show so like we teased the fuck out of it so when we got on the show it was like our second rated uh second highest rated episode after ali krieger was that uh on tv though yeah that was on tv okay And uh, did you uh, did you speak with any of the LAFC uh, staff? I've gotten uh, I've gotten a few apology emails, mm-hmm. like from people I know that mm-hmm. work at LAFC. Yeah. Nothing official, and I think from what I've been told, I think some of like the executives, um, they think it's like a like a bit. Mm-hmm. They think I'm like kidding. All right. So I'm like, it's, I'm not. And when I see that security guard, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll take a picture of the guy and I'll send it to you. Like, see, this is yeah, a joke. It seems like a overkill, no? Just for a it fake was, uh, media pass, you know? Like, the dude they caught, they, the one guy showed me, the redhead saw me at the end of the game. And he's okay. like, hey, man, let me just show you the picture of the fake passes. Like, one guy put L.A. sports. Mm-hmm. Pick an actual, like, you could have put anything, dog. You could have put Viacom. Like, no one would, know, you know what I mean? Right. L.A. sports, you made your own fucking, mm-hmm. like, it's, it's where, you know, who gave you the pass or what, what uh, publication you're with. I'm like, dog, be smarter. But, I mean, tickets were going for $5,000 on the secondary market for that game. Mm-hmm. So, clearly, it was important, you know? Sure. So I'm glad, whatever. Shouts to the hustlers who got away with it. <laughs> I took an L for somebody. Somebody <laughs> snuck to a different bathroom because right. I was took an L, so whatever. I'm curious, how did you, when you first started the, the podcast, right? How did uh-huh. you guys get going? Obviously, you know, we're at a certain level now, yeah. right? Now, lead I us mean, through it, lead us through like- uh, We didn't have all this. Right. <laughs> uh, we, we legitimately, so I have, uh, I had a tiny, what they call a junior one, which I know out here you don't have it. Everybody got a lot of space out here. But um, in New York, something called the junior one is essentially a, a large studio apartment with a wall. So it was like a living room kitchen and we had an island and the island is what separated the kitchen from the living room. It's basically just one big room, but like the island's like, oh, now you're in the kitchen. Now and you could clamp mics to it. So I looked on Amazon and I had a podcast before and sort of Christian. Mm-hmm. I looked on Amazon for the cheapest mics that came with clamps and I got those two. And those are what I use for my podcast. One person sat on one side of the island, I sat on the other. So when Christian and I were at the game, at the first NYCFC game, we start making some jokes. You know, it's like what we do as comedians, like we don't know how to turn it off. So we're just riffing. And a couple of people around us are kind of turning around and like, hey, that's funny, you know? So we're getting like some laughs, but we weren't trying. We were just trying to make each other laugh. Where were you guys doing this at, though? This is at the NYCFC, the first home oh, game. At the game? Yeah, at the oh, first home okay. game. Um, at Yankee Stadium, right? Mm-hmm. Where, of course, you want to play uh, soccer at a baseball stadium. Um, so we're just making each other laugh, and the people around us are kind of laughing. The second home game we go to, mm-hmm. one dude was like, hey, come stand up here. These guys are funny. So he's like calling other people over to stand by us. Mm -hmm. And that's when I said to Christian, like, hey, like we might have something here. Like maybe, maybe there's a way where we make content. And Mm -hmm. I like didn't know, like I Googled a bunch of stuff after that and I found Copa 90 and we were at that time, uh, Kick TV, I think it was still called, or it just became Kick. Uh, So I found some content, nothing was really kind of talking about MLS. Mm -hmm. And I said to him, like, we might have like a lane here. You know what I mean? Like as a comic, what do you do before seven, you know? Like, there's a lot, but some people write scripts. I'm not that good of a writer. I got a little bit of ADD, right? So, like, I'm pretty much just waiting all day to get on stage at night. That's kind of all I do. I don't do much. Like, my wife will send me a text, like, could you go pick this up? Like, other than that, I'm not really doing anything, right? So, I'm like, let's start, like, making content. He was writing for a sketch show at the time. So, he was, like, in the mode of writing during the day and, like, filming stuff and producing. He was like, yo, you be on camera. The original plan was I'd be on camera and he would produce and direct. And that was it. That's all he wanted. He didn't want to be on camera. Uh So, I was like, all right, we'll do that. And then we realized we both had podcast equipment. I had a place to, to record it during the day. So I was like, why don't we also do a podcast and we'll see which one kind of pops. And then once we did the podcast, we saw sort of the reaction to that. Our videos were fun. but the, And actually, one of the videos got me a TV de- a deal with Food Network. Because mm. I shot a video of um, the, the Pirlo sandwich. Pirlo got a sandwich named after him. Okay. And I did a taste test. And I'm like really good with food. Like I broke it down. And uh, my agent passed that on to Food Network and I ended up getting a holding deal with them. Uh, We did two pilots, it never happened, but like the videos were meaningful, 
but the podcast clearly made a connection with fans. Mm -hmm. And I think it was like in the beginning, we didn't have the voices we have now, but you kind of saw like what it could become. And fans were like, this is wild. And I remember one fan in particular was like, I love the show, don't really care about the Premier League. I mainly listen to you because of MLS. And then we got another, we got a, t a tweet after that that was like, I love when you guys talk MLS, no one's talking MLS. And that's kind of what started pushing us into like, why don't we mainly focus on that. We're starting to put more like Euro stuff in there now, mm -hmm. but for the, for like a, a short while, we were just straight MLS because mm -hmm. no one else was doing it. So we went to a, a radio station, was building up like their podcast network, and they, they sort of hired us to, to start doing the podcast out of like this gorgeous studio with like a three camera setup, 1080p. Like it was all like on robots. It was sick. There was like a live wall behind us that was made up of nine LED screens. Mm -hmm. So like we could put slides and stuff. And that was great for a while, but the, the radio station started selling a lot of the radio stations that were in there, like the, the um, conductor, I don't know what it's called, the, the, big, the head of the company was starting to sell radio stations. And there was like no one there. And we were coming in and we would have to like set up our own equipment sometimes. And like this one dude didn't have a boss. They never paid us for a bunch of ad reads. We were supposed <laughs> to do a split deal. So I straight up just jacked the camera. I was like, I'm taking one of these cameras. I took a $1,500 camera. I was like, I'm done, whatever. Like if you're not, if there's no boss here yeah. and you're not giving me my money, I'm taking something worth this value. Christian doesn't even know that by the way. Mm -hmm. I took a camera, whatever. Shouts Christian, <laughs> uh, shouts Tim. <laughs> um, and of course the camera has something broken on it. I was mad pissed, but whatever, it's mad expensive. So. I just, we, we were kind of in this process of like, all right, what do we do? Do we go back to our kitchens? Like, we're, let's ride this out as long as we can. And uh, that day, we get a meeting with uh, ICC. We're now the hosts of ICC. We have a meeting with them. And as we're going into the meeting, Christian gets, we both get an email. Christian checks it because he's like, you know, the good one. Um, and it's, a, it's an offer for a TV show. And I didn't know that one of the producers had come see us perform. And my agent had told me that someone was kind of poking around, asking a lot of questions, but mm -hmm. that happens a lot when you're a comic and sometimes nothing comes of it. So I didn't, I try to keep that out of my brain because then you'll start to get all your hopes up. And uh, all of a sudden, one of, our, one of our friends is also a writer and he was like, hey man, I'm kind of pitching you guys for a TV thing. Didn't say what it was. It was everything was kind of loose until we get this email. And we just like big hug and we walk into the ICC meeting like mad confident because mm -hmm. <laughs> we're like, fuck it, we're TV stars now, you know? Mm -hmm. The deal took like six months to negotiate. Wow. And my agent was like, yo, this thing might not happen. And I was like, I straight up called my agent. I was like, it's Howard Stern's agent. I have the same agent. And I was like, I was like yo, how many podcasts become television shows? What is the percentage? And, and she was like, I don't know, maybe less than 1%. I'm like, yeah. we're one of those. I'm like, get the deal done. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I want money, obviously, and yeah. I want and the money's not not great, but it's not terrible. You know, it's good yeah. money. I'm on TV. Like, I know you're. They're trying to figure out like ownership and all that. I'm like, get it all done. I don't care what it takes. I don't care. Like, we're all gonna make money off this. Like, get this shit done. I we need to have the show on TV. It'll just be something special for soccer. What I, if I was a kid and that was on TV, it would change my perception. Mm. You know, soccer, I had to kind of create my own world with it because I wasn't getting the shit from Europe. I wasn't getting the shit online. I had to like build it myself. I had to like, as an Arsenal fan, I had to sort of imagine what it was like on my own, reading it from papers and watching clips and shit. Right. Like imagine like there's some hood kid that's on, t that's watching TV, like soccer. He might be the only one out of his friends and he sees us and we kind of maybe talk like him. It might change. That kid might become a player. He might become a content creator. I was like, we need to be on TV. And luckily they got, it. They got the deal done. And here we are. So how long did it take before you guys went from kitchen, going to the games to popping? I mean, popping as far as like, when we would go to games, we'd be like, oh, it's the cool games and yeah. stuff like that. that. I would say probably about six months. But when you guys, so I'm confused. So when you're going to the games, you guys are recording at that time? No, no, no. We just, okay. just we're, commentating. Not even. We're okay. just like bullshitting. We're just riffing with each ah, other. Oh, got it. So like we're just, you know, BSing. Like something happens, right. my brain thinks of something yeah. funny to say. It's just the way my brain works. Mm. So I, we would be doing that. But like when we would go to games, we would just go as fans. And right. people would be like, yo, it's the cool game. Right. Yeah, yeah, cool you guys are game. just riffing on, off yeah. the game on each other. Just on each other. Like, engaging with fans. Fans would come over. Right. Like, one, you know, but people yeah. ask us for autographs on their jersey. I'm like, dog, yeah. we don't play soccer. Like, look at me. I physically can't, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so like that, I would say by like six months before we started kind of hearing like chirping of like who people knew who we were without us knowing them yeah. beforehand. And I would say it was about, it was about four and a half years before we got on TV. So somewhere in that, I would say probably two years in is mm -hmm. when we noticed the change. We did, we opened a comedy festival mm -hmm. in Atlanta with a live soccer podcast, which for people who don't know, opening a comedy festival is a huge deal. Opening and closing a festival mm -hmm. are very important. You want to start big and you want to end big. 
and Red Clay Comedy Festival, shouts to Red Clay, they asked us to open a comedy festival with a soccer podcast, which is like unheard of, you know? So we put a lot of effort into it. We got Julian Gressel, uh, Brittany Arnold, and Bobby Boswell. Like we, we straight finessed like the media guy to be like, you gotta send us players, like we have to. Mm -hmm. It's a huge event, blah, blah, blah. We sold the room out and they were very happy with the returns on the tickets and they were like, it was just a huge event. That was like the moment where I'm like, I looked at Christian before we got on stage and I was like, dog, we kinda might have, we might have done something. You know, like this isn't just like a niche group of fans, like this is like for real. And there's been a few moments where like Christian and I have looked at each other and been like, oh fuck. Like when we did the ICC event in Charlotte, it's like 2,500 people waiting for Megan Rapino. She's an hour late. And for that entire hour, Christian and I just riffed on Mike. Just not even doing like, like bits, like, mm -hmm. cause there's kids, like we can't really do our act. Yeah. We were just making everyone laugh and have a good time. And I remember the, the sound when they, when like the kids finally like, and parents and everyone there, like made eye contact with like, they could see Megan Rapino's hair coming up the stairs, like to the stage. I remember the sound that came over it was insane. And I was like, man, Megan's the star. Like, you know, you, you kind of like you get overwhelmed by how, how much her star was, at, especially at that moment, mm -hmm. right after winning a World Cup. And uh, this little girl comes up to us and she's like, and she has Megan Rapinoe's uh, uh, autograph. Mm -hmm. She goes, can I get your autograph? And I was like, you don't want, I was like straight up, I was like, you don't want my autograph. <laughs> I was like, you don't know who I am, right? I was just on stage. And she goes, no, I, I enjoyed when mm -hmm. you guys were on stage before Megan got there more. Mm -hmm. And I was like, what? Like you're wearing her jersey. Right. But I'm like, we made a connection with this. Like what, I think she was like 12 years old. Like there's some kid who was just bored, 98 degree weather, you know what I mean? Just waiting and she enjoyed just us riffing. And that's like, I looked at Christian while we were on stage and I was like, I don't know how much longer we, we have to go, but we're kind of making this work. And I remember after that, they were like, you guys are our host for pretty much anything we're doing that's awesome like those have been the few moments and obviously after we finished our first episode christian and i went out for a drink mm -hmm. and he doesn't drink scotch or whatever but i'm like you're drinking fucking dark mm -hmm. liquor mm -hmm. i'm like yo we just like i don't know what this is like if you're a hunter and you kill your first buck you know right. you drink dark liquor like you know <laughs> if you're a mafia member and you put your first hit you drink dark liquor i'm like we're drinking dark liquor you no, know no vodka tequila, yeah right? <laughs> nah yeah, dog yeah. we do we're drinking dark liquor and we're sipping it we're yeah. fucking like yeah. like men and it was just like this moment of like I don't know how long any of this will last in a year. Nobody maybe knows who I am, but fuck, man, we got a podcast about soccer on television. That's Shit. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I still, I'm still confused. Okay. So I'm trying okay. to, I'm trying to, you know, trying to figure this out. So you guys are going to the NYCFC games uh -huh. and you guys are just riffing, right? Just telling jokes. Yeah, no telling microphones. Jokes. Yeah. We're no microphones. Right. Each other. It has nothing to do with the, uh, it's not through the team or anything like that. Right? No, no. We're, we're paying for our own season right. tickets. So you guys are sitting there. So you guys are, you guys are watching the game from your season tickets and you guys are just riffing and then people around are starting to listen. Is that how, and then yeah, they're kind of like laughing yeah. along yeah. with us and like, okay. we'll be yelling wild shit. Right. Right. And like people just kind of wanted to be closer to us because they realized we were funny. So then how do they start, uh, making the connection between what you guys are doing and then starting to know you guys as the soccer cooligans. Once we put the episode up, okay. we put it up on like an NYCFC supporters group. Cause the first two episodes were NYCFC based podcasts. Okay. Um, we put it up in uh, the supporters group chat, like on a Facebook post. Yeah. And, um, I think on Reddit and, uh, the people on Reddit hated it. And I think to this day they still hate us. <laughs> uh, cause they're like mad serious. Like I, yeah. you know, I get it. You know, you want to look at porn. You want to look at anime and you want to talk serious about soccer. I get it. I'm so sorry that we're here to do jokes. Um, like we're starting to see a turn in the comments. Like some people are like, they're cool. And some people are like, fuck, those guys are hacks. I'm like, all right, sorry that I don't know what a super cyan is. Okay. Um, I'm really sorry that I don't masturbate below where my mother sleeps. Um, so uh, shouts to Reddit. They're going to hate me for this now too. Um, so like that we posted it like what do you guys think mm. and we weren't like promoting it like yeah. we had the we had the twitter and we had the uh, the instagram the instagram had like nobody on it the twitter maybe had like 300 people from like soccer fans that are just clicking on anything that says soccer like yeah. like i think our number two city at the time was like baghdad you know what i mean like anybody was just following us because we put the word soccer in it mm -hmm. soccer cooligans we did that on purpose even though the show's not called the soccer cooligans yeah. we put that on purpose so you would know we were american and you would know it was about soccer mm -hmm. um it started to pick up and like we would do bits we would do videos where we would like make a joke and like people would repeat the joke back to us mm. hey man you said this thing on the podcast yo christian right. you said this thing on the podcast we would be walking and be like it's the cool you know so like people sort of kind of picked up like that's who they are yeah. and we didn't set out to be like 
we're gonna be celebrities at the game sure you know like but like when you walk around like people will leave their pack their group friend their friends group to be like yo what's up man oh i really like that episode you put out yo that thing was funny yo can i take a picture and like that started happening little by little mm -hmm. and like we like you kind of feel like all right maybe this is making an impact you know and what was the what was the original platform that you guys were putting your podcast on YouTube? Uh, no, no, no. It was okay. uh, we did put it all up on YouTube, but okay. only because like we're like whoever can see it. Okay. You know, if, I think to this day, like mad people don't really watch it on YouTube. Mm -hmm. It's way more like uh, listen as a podcast, and I think it's a lot of people driving to work. Okay, oh, we're on on subway. So basically, but, um, all the different platforms that are listening to you guys. Yeah, we're on Stitcher. You know, yeah. everything but SoundCloud. Got it. So like, it was more it was more audio in the beginning, right? Yeah, we did okay. put some videos up on YouTube. Like yeah. we did like some man on the street stuff. Um, like, but we shot it with like a GoPro on a tripod. It looked like there was no camera on the tripod. Mm -hmm. Like people just thought we were just, people thought we were crazy. <laughs> people just thought we were like staring yeah. at a tripod. People like, is there even a camera yeah. on there? <laughs> it was Christian had a GoPro and we could get it into Yankee Stadium. Uh, okay. So like we, you know, like we, okay. the Yankee Stadium was like, wow, it's like Homeland Security getting in that joint. Right. So I'm like, it's so hard to get any bag or anything. Like okay. Christian had this, they don't allow selfie sticks. So Christian had this thing that like is for like, if you drop, that dropped the GoPro in the water. It's like a handle, but it also it's a flotation device. Like it floats. And we had that. And then at one point they were like, that looks like a weapon. It's like mm -hmm. yellow. It like clearly looks like a kid's toy. And that kind of looks like a dildo when you look, when you really look at it, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> but, um, but the guy's like, yeah, that's not allowed in there. I'm like, he just wants it for himself. Um, <laughs> trying to hit that prostate, my guy. Uh, but we, we normally weren't allowed to bring that. So like yeah. Christian had this tiny tripod that he could fit in his bag. And okay. that's what we were bringing. So then they would check the bag, see the little tripod, but they're okay with that. Yeah. Like okay. we brought mics. Like we used to try to shoot videos at halftime. Yeah. And I brought two microphones, a yeah. bunch of XLR cables. Christian brought the other stuff, so it wouldn't look like I was bringing a lot of equipment. Yeah. And I remember the security lady's like, I can't let you in with these microphones. And I'm like, mm -hmm. why not? And she's like, because they're microphones. I go, and? And she's like, huh. She's like, why do you have microphones? I go, I'm a stand-up comic. She's like, you bring your own microphones? Mm -hmm. That's a stand-up comic? I'm like, <laughs> I'm a germaphobe, and I don't trust those other motherfuckers. Yeah. And she's like, for real? I'm like, yeah. And I happen to have a hand sanitizer in the bag. Mm -hmm. She saw the hand sanitizer. She's like, oh, you for real germaphobe? I'm like, I don't touch nothing. I don't touch the subway doors, nothing. She's like, oh, okay, go ahead, baby. Uh -huh. And that was the only way I got those mics in, and we were able to film. We pitched a, a show to NYCFC mm -hmm. where we interviewed a comedian at halftime. All right. And NYCFC had just switched presidents. The one president liked it. The new one's like, I don't know who you guys are. I'm not responding to any of your emails. Um, he only responded with like, hey, we'll consider it. And that was it. So we just invited a good friend of ours who's like a big comic. And we're like, we'll interview you at halftime. Mm -hmm. And it just so happened to be a big comeback win. And we interviewed him again at the end of the match. And that's how we got all the equipment in. And that was the but first. You got, but this is still guerrilla style, right? All guerrilla, everything. Okay, so then halftime. Okay, so I'm trying to picture it, right? Yeah. So you're at. You seem to be very confused here. No, no, I'm trying to, because I'm a very yeah. visual guy, and okay. then you know, I, and I'm slow, so it takes me a while to like connect the dots, right? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. then I figure my audience is leaving slower. So this is what happens when weed is legal, okay? <laughs> Y'all need to vote. No, I'm joking. All right. So gorilla, you okay? So I got the picture. You're sneaking these stuff in, right? All yeah. your equipment, okay? Split it up, and you're doing a show at halftime. How are okay? And you guys are just where are you doing this? You know where are you filming? Just from the stands. Your stands. So the stands. Boom. Okay. Yeah. How is security not just coming in and, you know what I mean, and, and you know interrupting what? or confiscating? The, at that time, yeah. NYCFC security was way more worried about smoke bombs. Those okay. smoke bombs, like when the, when the team scored, yeah. you would see orange and blue, and they did not want right. it. They're, they're flammable. So NY, the Yankee Stadium was like, this doesn't happen during a baseball game. Yeah. Security was from a baseball game, and they're like, what's happening? Why are people chanting? Who gave this guy a drum? Yeah. They wouldn't even allow drums. So they weren't worried about us. They okay. were worried about all that. So there's a commotion going on, and you guys are filming, and people are listening, yeah, and people riffing. Are like, but you know, halftime, everyone right. sits. Normally, you stand. Everyone yeah. sits at halftime, and we would just put out the GoPro with like oh. that little handle, yep. and we would just like film with microphones, and then we put oh. it all away as soon all as right. halftime was done. Okay. And like maybe a couple times, like NYPD, because NYPD patrols in Yankee Stadium as well. Um, they would come up to us and be like, what are you doing? Yeah. And we're like, yo, we're filming a video. You want to be in it? And they're like, no, don't put us in it. And we're like, oh, we're just comedians or whatever. And one guy was like, you're not a comic. And I showed him my website and he was like, oh, okay. And he was like, during the game, he's just sitting there watching my clip, which was kind of funny. I'm like, this guy's just watching us. I never do his job. <laughs> but he's laughing. I'm like, all right, good. You like that one? He's like, you're the one about your wife who's a nurse. Uh, <laughs> but like, that's the only real time that like, people were worried about what we were doing. Okay. I think there was also like a spirit of like, people were like doing a lot of Instagram videos and stuff. Yeah, so yeah. like, it kind of seemed normal that we would be filming something. Got it. Got it. Okay. And then, okay. So now 
now from that point mm -hmm. i had a chicken sandwich yeah. after that <laughs> i just want to make sure it's cloudy day uh, did nycfc ever now uh, approach you guys to you know recently yes okay. we've done recently some, yeah wow. we've done some content with them okay i don't know why but like they started inviting like famous comedians to mm -hmm. like sit in a suite and they would give them a jersey and I, look i'm not a famous comic. you don't know me from comedy right you know i'm a comic because i tell you but you don't like watch. you're not watching my special so like i get that they wouldn't invite us okay. right to that but they know who we are of course and they know that that's our friends okay. so why wouldn't you hire us to interview sure. them as opposed to take one picture you spend all this money yeah they would send them an uber like a black car they would give them a jersey a whole to do for one photo and i'm like okay. this is dumb y'all being dumb and i pulled over a media person who i knew does like media with them and i was like like andrew Schulz, one of my homies okay i'm like i know he's here he texts me that he's coming down at halftime okay. i'm like why aren't we up there f like the q a with him real quick right. get content Getting from some him. engagement right? yeah get okay. something to put up on your instagram or on your social and they're like oh it's not a bad idea but i don't know if the club really wants to i'm like what you just want one photo photoshop that shit. don't even invite these people mm -hmm. you know put dead comics in there look joan rivers came to one of the games you know what i mean yeah. like what are we doing like you guys are wasting money and as a fan this seems stupid right. be, be better and now the new media people that was like a long time ago the new media people they see the benefit in working with us they see that the fans are engaged um during u.s open cup which is a competition kind of like the fa cup here um they had us sort of run their social their instagram but i thought like they're gonna give us the password to their instagram they did not they're like take video send it to us we'll put it up right. so like all the wild shit they didn't put up yeah, yeah they're not crazy man <laughs> yeah they're not yeah they're smart <laughs> they're i really they yeah. didn't say much i'm like yeah. i'm not gonna say anything because i think they're gonna give us the password to their instagram yeah and then they did not they're like no shoot it on your phone text it to us yeah, we'll, we'll put we'll it up put ourselves up. Right. but it was cool it was like a instagram takeover and that was the most engagement that they had had during a u.s open cup game ever so like they're they're sort of finding ways to work with us more mm -hmm. my agent is in contact with them and they're they actually reaching out to my agent about doing stuff this year uh, or our agent i should say for us to do stuff this year and that's better. Like in the past, it'd been us pitching them. Uh -huh. And now they're kind of like, would they be interested in doing that? You know what I mean? Yeah. So like the, the conversation is now sort of shifted. But I think everything changes when something's on TV. There's like a certain level of validation, which kind of annoys me. It's like, that's literally, we're not doing anything different than we did on the podcast. It's just cameras and it's going on TV. It's the same podcast. There's nothing different besides we shoot, we throw to commercial which we had to learn to do, be like, we'll be right back after this. that. That's legitimately the only difference. Mm -hmm. But now all of a sudden you wanna work with us, like everybody, it's not just NYC, everybody now, now you wanna work with us. Like, and that's just like the Nork in me, who's like, oh, you didn't love us when we was down. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you don't belong. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I, I always feel like the underdog because of that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So now it's like we're getting, but it's kind of cool. Like people are reaching out to us like, hey man, we were interested in doing this. or so we're interested yeah. in doing that. I try my hardest to make sure that I, I work with yeah. and Cooligans is representing and being represented by yeah. independent media. Like Urban Pitch, when they reached out and wanted to do the article, I was like, yeah, yeah that's who I want to fucks with. Yeah. Like when other companies were doing the same thing, Instagram accounts that have like big followings on their own, when they reach out, I'm like, that's, we'll do that. Like small podcasts will be like, I can't believe, like shoulder to shoulder, I did that, which is an LAFC podcast here in LA. Mm -hmm. I drove to their place and did their podcast and the guy's like, I can't believe you're actually doing this. I'm like, y you are where we were four years ago. I would have loved if, you know, someone huge would have come on our show. And I think Jimmy Conrad did, Alexi Lawless did, like yeah. we had some big names, but like I would have loved if something like this happened. So I'm gonna repay that back. I'm gonna pay that back as much as I can. I comedy isn't like a one person wins, it's everybody can win. So I'm I'm we're taking that mentality to 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 soccer. It's like it's not just one right back. We're not players. You know what I mean? Like yeah. rising tides lift all boats. If if Cooligans gets a TV show, that means y'all everybody could have a TV show. Everybody could win. Everybody. It doesn't matter. As long as the content's good and you're hustling and you're busting your ass. Dog, we haven't missed a Wednesday in five years. We've put out an episode every single Wednesday in five years. We haven't missed one. We're busting our ass. I'm in Ireland. I dial in. I'll, I'll call in Skype. Christian was in Dominican Republic in the hood where his family lives, like in the hood. And they had to go ask a cousin who had a DSL connection. DLS, DSL, DLL. I don't even remember DSL. what it is. Yeah, yeah. it's like he had the best internet connection he had to go film there like we and like we had to do a skype from there we'll do whatever it takes mm -hmm. to make sure we get an episode out on wednesday to feed the fans because their consistency wins as long as other people doing that we can all win we can all win and that's what i hope for so now when like the big media companies are reaching out it's like yeah i'll take that bag 
Yeah. But like, I'm, you're not going to get that much loyalty from me. I mean, you will, because I'll, I'll do what you ask and I'll do what the contract says. But like, I still want to, I, f- I want to fuck with the small podcast and I want to fuck with all the people that are sort of hustling and make a name because like, it's American soccer. Like, we all got to do yeah. it. So you mentioned some names that kind of early adopters that showed you guys support, like yeah. Alexi Lawless, Jimmy Conrad, who I can see them doing that, right? Yeah. Who are, who are some of the haters that didn't get show you guys love? Um, <laughs> yeah, let's talk <laughs> about it. Uh, Kick TV. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know what happened. Yeah. I mean, I kind of do. And of course, Christian's going to be like, it's Alexis fault. It is in this situation. <laughs> like I went on the 30 tweet uh, thread okay. where like I kind of, you know, like it's just like every once in a while there's every kid from Newark has a little bit of Tupac in them. You mm. know what I mean? And every once in a while Tupac it takes control <laughs> okay. and it was I was in I was like I was I was angry I, for no reason I was in my apartment I was just angry I was like nah man fuck this I'm willing to say what needs to be said and that's it got me in trouble my entire life but whatever you know what I mean if I don't have my dignity I ain't got nothing right so or my integrity I ain't got shit so I was like I went on this 30 rant like 30 tweet rant where I was like yo fuck this and fuck the game and like everything is corny and it's this and it's all beautiful people and you know there's no one that talks like us and it was just like i'll put this out in the world and maybe later people will find it you know what i mean it kind of starts getting retweeted and i'm like oh boy and you know this is before like that blue line that like you could just add more tweets i would have to go back and hit reply Mm -hmm. and it's fine it's harder and harder to find it and i'm like oh my god these people responding to everything i'm saying and in it i say like I, and I was saying they as the industry. Okay. And I said, and they fired Jimmy, who, yeah, he's not a comic, but at least he was fun, right? Like, he was doing silly shit, right? And, like, the, there clearly was a group, a core group fan base that liked it. And I was like, yeah. none of this is funny. Almost none of it is entertaining. Like, and I meant, I meant everything. I, I meant MLS's content. I meant mm-hmm. everything. But I think because of that, Kick mm-hmm. saw that as a shot at them directly. And... I, like I get it, you know what I mean, but yeah. it's also like yo, it's kind of petty to like hold on to that grudge. So like, I know people that worked at Kick and then became Copa U, uh, Copa ninety US that were pitching us, and somehow, some way, it would always get stopped. Like we never got content, and then they tried to steal some of our content, and that's when I caught. Like that's when I was like. So we so there was a video that they did. I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but we had already done this video. Give us give us the uh, I'll the give you like the, version, yeah, the I'm version. Into that. Right. So like we took a player out on a pizza tour because okay. I I know a lot about pizza. I'm considered okay. a pizza expert in New York. Right. We took Tommy McNamara on a pizza tour. It took forever to schedule this thing. When's he allowed to eat pizza? You know, when's he in New York? Mm-hmm. He's a New York dude, sure. but he's like with his family. It was like his agent legitimately was like, here's a three hour window. <laughs> You have to make it work. Mm-hmm. I'm moving stuff around. I'm bailing on responsibilities. It <laughs> took everything to get. We had no videographer. We ended up getting this kid who didn't even know how to shoot. Half the video was like out of focus. It was insane. <laughs> but like we got it done, right? Okay. We got the fucking thing done. <laughs> Editing it was pure hell. We actually spent two hundred fifty dollars of our own money. And at the yeah. time, comedians don't make any money. We had no money coming in. We spent two hundred fifty dollars of our own money to get like an editor who like at least kind of made it seem like a good video. You know what I mean? Like he kind of pieced it together. Okay. Some of it was shot on iPhone. I mean, it was just a mess, <laughs> right? Like uh, uh, I had a gimbal that I didn't know how to work. It was a wild time, right? But we made it work and the player yeah. loved it. And he like told all his friends and now like other players wanted to come on our show. Yeah. It worked out, right? Like we invested in ourselves and it worked out. All of a sudden we get an email from a buddy of mine who runs pizza tours, who says, hey man, uh, somebody wants to do a pizza tour with, uh, with a soccer player. So mm-hmm. I said they should go through you. Um, so I'm going to send them your contact information. I was like, all right, cool. I get an email back from him saying like, Hey man, uh, well actually he calls me. He's like, Hey, they, for some reason said that you're not allowed to do it because you have a contract. It was with a Red Bull player. You have a contract with NYCFC that for exclusivity. And I was like, that's news to me. me. I'm like, where the fuck is that money going? Right. I was like, I don't have a contract. So I told them, I'm like, dude, they might be confused because I go to the games. Yeah. Season ticket holder. But yeah, I'm yeah. not, I, yeah. there's no contract. He writes back. He's like, yeah, for some reason they say you're not allowed to do the video. Mm. He's like, but I'm not doing it because it's a soccer player and I don't know anything about soccer. Mm. So you should be the one of all the people in New York. Sure. If it involves pizza <laughs> and soccer, yeah. you're the only guy. Right. You, they you're reach the out, guy. Yeah. They reach out to somebody else mm. who's a homie of mine that mm-hmm. makes pizza in New York. Okay. And they said, hey, we're going to bring a soccer player. Would you mind interviewing? They just wanted the pizza guy to interview him. Yeah. And then he was like, why don't you talk to Alexis? And the guy clearly got frustrated. He was like, Alexis can't do the video. They go back to the guy who runs the pizza tours, and they said, look, we'll pay you double. Mm. We'll pay you double to do the video. Okay. We just need someone to do this video on this day. 
he calls me up. He's like, dude, they're offering me double the money. And I said, yo, I don't want, I'm never going to fuck with people's money. Take the money. I go, but just so you know, this means war. Like, this is it. Like, I'm done. And he was like, all right. He's like, I'm going to tell them no. He's like, I really don't want to piss you off. And I, I don't want to do the video because I don't care about soccer. I'm just going to say no. He tells them no, even for double the money. The next day we record our podcast, 35 minute, like, spitting rant rant okay i'm legitimately legitimately at one point said yeah. i'm like this is an act of war like right. i'm a fucking president i went <laughs> off i went off on, and christian on, on who though new york red bulls no 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 this okay. is on on copa oh okay. Okay, and okay. christian was like fucking and christian's like he's usually like the everybody relax. he was like yo this is war i'm like my guy right like we went in and uh i've never talked about this by the way i went in and i was like da ba 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 we go to watch uh, like a World Cup game or something, like a qualifier. Immediately after the podcast, we go and I'm like steaming. I'm still hot. I get a phone call from my guy and I was like, what's up? And he's like, hey, man, they just said that they have to do the video. So they're willing to hire you. I was like, all right, we got to cut that rant. <laughs> I was like, we got to cut that rant. I'm about to make money. Uh, but the, this is, and this is the lengths they went. Yeah. They didn't hire me directly. They hired him and allowed him to hire me. Okay. So I guess my name didn't appear or something. I'm like, I was just like, what a fucking, what a long way to go yeah. to just not have me do something. Just right. me. Yeah. And I'd been in like one or two other of their videos because like people who I knew worked there were like, come do a quick soundbite. Like it wasn't about me, the video. It was just like a quick soundbite. So like that was like the one thing. And I don't know if it's hater. I don't know what the, the backstory is. Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to find out like if anybody who worked there wants to tell me what the backstory is, I'd be interested to know. Like, uh, you know, now the leverage is on my side. They're not here anymore, right? But uh, I'd be interested to know, you know, like why, why us? Like, was it because of that rant? Was it because we are wild? Was it because we talk the way we talk and we're not pretty boys? Like, what's the deal? Christian's kind of cute, you know? <laughs> like, what's the deal? You know, the kid still looks, he put up that 10-year picture. Okay. He looks like he Same. got younger. Yeah. Fuck that guy, you know what I mean? <laughs> but I'm gonna, I'm like, hey, you're friends with me. How am I not stressing you out? How are you not getting wrinkles, mm -hmm. right? The kid's gonna look 16 until he's 50 and then he's gonna look like dog shit. So when that ball hits, <laughs> I'm going to be right there and I'm going to point it out. Right. Um, like I want to know why that, that's one of them. And then like, I would say like we took shots at men and blazers from the get. Okay. And like, I get, I, they opened the door for us. Right. I'm not going to, yeah, yeah, the concept hundred yeah. percent. They yeah. opened the door. They begat us. Even if there's no direct correlation, <laughs> sure. their success allowed us to be successful. They paved the road. They paved the path. We walked, I'm not going to take that away from them. Mm -hmm. I think it's an entertaining show. What pisses me off as a comic is when people say they're funny. And I'm like, mm. I mean, they're entertaining and you laugh at some of the stuff they say, but giving someone the credit that they're funny to me, it's like, that's a bit of a higher bar for me. So I was like, I got to listen to this, right? I was not a fan just because I didn't find that content, but I will listen. Okay. It's like the same fucking bit over and over again. And to me, they're kind of like the way they're talking about American soccer is kind of condescending. Mm. Like they're like, oh, yeah, Kyle Beckerman's the greatest midfielder in the world. It's like, dog, Kyle Beckerman's mother doesn't think that. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like they're, they're whatever, as they would say, they're taking the piss. Like it's cute. It's like saying like an ugly person's gorgeous and like giving them fake confidence. It's like yeah. to me, the way they talked about American soccer in the episodes I listened to seemed wildly condescending. And I listened to a lot of their content. And I was like, I get it that they're, they're adding a benefit and they're adding a value to soccer. I'm not going to take that away from them. But to me, it was like, I get it. You think you're fucking special because you're British. You know what I mean? Y'all invented the game. Y'all ain't doing much with it. You know what I mean? But you invented the game. I get it. So, like, to me, I, like, had that in my head. And then Christian mentioned Men in Blazers. And I was like, yo, they suck. And I just, like, said it. And that became a whole fucking thing. So much so that, like, the, the, the Alexis in me was like, fuck it. If somebody ever brings it up, I'm going to... I'm gonna hold that, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So like, people started saying, what's your show like? And I'm like, imagine Men in Blazers, but funny. Mm -hmm. And I just started saying that that was like our slogan, okay. right? And it would really piss people off. <laughs> they have a very rabid fan base. Yeah. I was talking to a guy who had the Men in Blazers jersey on, they, they sold a kit a while ago. Okay. And I should have known better, and he was like, uh, Andrew Wiebe uh, from MLS was like talking with, was that MLS All-Star? And he was like, oh, Andrew Wiebe, you know? And he was like, oh, do you know these guys? And he's like, no, man, who are you guys? And I'm like, what's up, Alexis, Christian, Cooligans? And he's like, oh, and he's like, yeah, it's a really funny soccer podcast. These guys are comedians. And he goes, oh, comedians, soccer podcast, what's it like? And both of them looked mm -hmm. at me, like Christian and Andrew, and they're like, don't, don't do it. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I don't know, you like Men in Blazers? Like, yeah, I was like, it's kind of like that, but imagine if that was entertaining or funny. Mm -hmm. 
And this dude's face went like red <laughs> and he legitimately wanted to fight me. <laughs> the dude legit, like if his wife wasn't there, he uh -huh. would have threw hands. <laughs> and I was like, dog, we're comedians. Like I'm making a joke. If you like it, it's whatever. I'm like, people yeah. love that stuff, you know? And I just kept, I kept tagging him. Like every time it seemed like I was going to like apologize, I just hit him with something else. Okay. And it was just like, the guy just kept getting angry. And to me, it's funny. It's like, you're going to fight me at an MLS event. That might be the most exciting thing happening this weekend. Um, you know, like, Real Madrid's going to rip these guys apart, you know? So like for me, I was like, you could shit on what we do all day. And like people, somebody put on Twitter once, like if you're a cool, if you call yourself a cool again and kill yourself, it's like, all right, tag us, bruh. <laughs> you know, I had, to, I had to search my name to find that. Mm. You know, tag is like, I don't mind the hate. If you ain't, if you ain't got no haters, you ain't popping, you know? Yeah. So like, I don't mind it. But like early on, it pissed me off that like people would stop us from getting money. That mm. pissed me off. Cause I'm like, yo, we're comedians. Like we're not finance guys that have a podcast. Sure. We're literally just trying to make ends meet. I, I don't want my wife to leave me and I don't want my landlord to kick me out. Like if we could find any money in this business and everyone's like, yo, you're never gonna make money doing a soccer podcast, which my wife is like, you're a comic and now a soccer podcast. What are you gonna become a blacksmith next? Like what else are you gonna do? Open up a blockbuster? There's stop it, you know, try to make money, please. I get where she's coming from. I get where everyone's coming from. We found money, but it wasn't because, and that's why like I hold, I hold what Cooligans did kind of like to some high regard in our own brains because it's like we did it without the help of the other media, like the bigger media. The people who had power didn't fuck with us. It was all like the little people. It was all, and little people in a very respectful way. It was all the people like us who had nothing, who were like, whatever, you can come on our show or we'll talk about your show or blah, blah, blah. And like a couple fans said they wanted to have a reaction podcast to what, to our podcast, which is like insane. <laughs> I would love to listen to that. I would love to hear what people think about my in, insane rambling, you know, mm -hmm. but it was all because people like around us were like, we'll all build each other up. Right. So like, to me, that's like meaningful. So like, did we have haters? Yeah, and fuck them, you know? Right. Cooligans, how'd you guys come up with that name? Uh, Cause it was so bad, it was good. Mm. Um, I wanted to do a soccer podcast before I met Christian. Yeah. And it was like an idea I had for like 10 minutes. Okay. And I knew this British kid who was a huge QPR fan and I was an Arsenal fan and he was a comic. And whenever we met, uh, we would talk about soccer. and. I had the idea, I'm like, oh, maybe we should do a podcast one day. And I was just like a loose, idea. it wasn't with the idea of Cooligans. And he was like, let's sit down and come up with a name. Once it's a name, once it's named, he's like, it'll be a thing, yeah. right? Yeah. And that was his like whole inspiration. So we're shooting out dumb ideas for names. And I come up with, instead of Hooligan, Cooligan. And he was like, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard of. And I go, I know, right? Like, it's so bad, it's good again. And he's like, I don't agree with that. He's like, I just think it's bad. And I was like, ah, I don't know if this is going to work out. Yeah. And I just had this notebook, like a comedy notebook, and I had the word Cooligan in it, and I kind of circled it, and I kind of, like, left it. And I never thought of it again until, like, a year later when Christian and I are like, let's come up with a podcast. And, like, we're standing in the stands at NYCFC, and he was like, we should do a podcast. I'm like, we should. I was like, I got a name for it. I was like, Cooligans. And he goes, huh, God, that's so bad, it's good. And I was like, eh. And I'm like, I like, it was like, you know, like the square peg in a square hole. I'm like, it works. You know, right. he gets it. He get, he completely gets it. And that guy, the British dude now writes for Comedy Central. He's like doing great. And he's always like, man, I should have done that podcast, which I'm like, it wouldn't have been the same anyway. But like, as soon as Christian's like, yo, I kind of, I hate it, but I kind of like it. I'm like, yeah, that's the point. And like, I wanted it to be kind of silly because I don't want you to think we take ourselves that serious. You know, right, right. I wanted you to know like, all right, these guys are really just about the jokes. Right. So, so bad that is good. Okay, so <laughs> you look like you don't agree. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, so bad that is good. So give me the 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 best and the worst of MLS. Then. The best and the worst. Yep, the best of MLS. Like, what's the best of MLS, right? Like, what's the best part of MLS? Yeah, the best part of MLS. So, like, if you're trying to convert a fan, right? What's the best part of MLS? And what's the worst like, part of MLS? It's like wild, right? There's okay. like, there's target allocation money, mm -hmm. general allocation money, youth transfer funds. It's like a, it's it's almost like its own and like a, <laughs> its own entity. It's almost like its own world, you know? It doesn't follow the same rules as any other soccer league, which it's almost like it's so like. It's, you know, there's a phrase in, in, in it, a lot of countries have it, but I know it in Cuba, they say like the translation is the grapes are sour, but it, the, the wine is uh, sour, but it's ours. Okay. Or the wine is bitter, but it's ours. It's like, yeah, whatever. These are our grapes. These are the, this is the wine we can make. Got it. So like, love it because it's ours. Right. So That's kind of how it feels. Ours. But, yeah. else is like uniquely ours, right? Yeah. And so also different. it's like, it doesn't follow, it's not just two teams that could win every year. Yeah. Okay. It, it maybe doesn't have the history. It's only 24th, this will be the 25th sure. year, but like there's something kind of 
fun about how kooky it is mm. like that i and i do really believe that i'm not just saying like you should watch because of that yeah the worst part is the same thing mm. it's like so frustrating to be like i i asked don garber during a press conference or like q a and they give us press passes so we go yeah. i don't know why two comedians are allowed in your press conference everyone else is really good at their job professional there's like you know, me and Christian are like borrowing wires to charge our phones. We're completely out of like, I'm tripping over stuff. Like nobody should allow us in press conferences. And the person next to us like kind of passed the mic to me to like give back to the moderator. And I was like, <laughs> Alexis from the Cooligans, which uh -huh. sounds so stupid uh -huh. uh, coming from a professional setting. And I was like, hey, uh, you know, you're adding all these different, you know, features for the, the, for the cap. I go, why not just get rid of the whole cap? How about that? Let players, let, let teams spend what they want. And you would, like, Don Garber and the guy next to him was the guy who, like, handles that. He's, like, the cap guy. They, they both look like robots that got water poured on them. They're like, da, da, da. You know, like, they didn't know what to say because no one had ever asked that question. And at the end, people from MLS, like, maybe you shouldn't come to press conferences. I'm like, yeah, that's probably a good idea. Uh, I'm like, I've been saying it. You know, I don't even know why you allow us in here. Can I go get more chips? You know, like, I, to me, like, that's the most, the worst part about it is, like, you have to like learn a new language to understand the league, you know? Like, why doesn't this team go? That's why European coaches don't always work out. Because a European coach is like, here's our deficiencies. Let's go get players here, here, and here. And they're like, yeah. oh, we can't because we don't have any more of this imaginary money. Right. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. I, I, I get no why people get frustrated. There's no easy fix based on money, right? In no. Box. Yeah, yeah. And I think the easy fix is just like, release the hounds, dude. Open mm -hmm. the gates. Like, let them go. There's teams that will fall. Yeah. And I think if people are willing to spend, Three hundred million dollars for a franchise. Yeah. Someone will buy. Someone with money will buy a franchise that fails yeah. because it'll be a discount. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I'm like, I think we're I think we're at a point now where it'll succeed on its own. I don't call those shots. If I did, MLS would be way more lit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like I would allow you to bribe a VAR. I think that'd be hilarious <laughs> if you could auction VAR. Yeah. Yeah. Like the two coaches are watching. They're like, all right, yeah, maybe that was a penalty. And the other guy's like, all right, how about a hundred thousand? You know, hundred thousand in game. You know, mm -hmm. what I mean, this all goes away. I would love that. Like, I would be MLS would be worse. But if you listen to one thing I say, it's just get rid of the cap. Mm -hmm. Let teams spend what they want. LAFC would be lit. Atlanta would be lit. NYCFC would be lit. Miami would be lit. Maybe Portland or some other teams would be lit, and it would be dope, and it would be great. And teams with pl young players like Sporting Kansas City that have a system, they might even win. It might not just be just the best players, but it would build the league very quickly. And 2026 is coming around the corner as long as we don't get into World War III, right? 2026, the World Cup will be here, right? Mm -hmm. Unless it's a nuclear holocaust. And then, like, we'll, we should have a league that we present to the world as the best possible we could do. Not this sort of, like, all right, look, we've kind of kept some heads down, but we've built other heads up. Not that. Present, like, yo, here's the best. All right. Appreciate that. All right, what's next for upcoming for Alexis and for Soccer Cool Yo, movies, yeah, like yeah. porn, dog. I'm getting <laughs> porn directing. No. Uh, for Cool Kids, I honestly okay. don't know. Like, I, I don't know. Like, maybe I think the chemistry works that maybe we'll try something else as well. Maybe we'll do a show about something else. Maybe it'll be something about our travels because we travel a lot. I want to do a live event in every MLS stadium. Mm. Um, maybe not all in the same year because that's just too many weekends away from comedy. But I want to I want to interview as many big players. We want to get like David Beckham on the show. Like, you know, we have a booker now. Like, we want to get like big big names. Like, I just think like how far can we take this thing? Like, you know, to me it's like well, it kind of feels like a fever dream. You know, like I, every time I walk in the studio, I'm like, I can't believe this is real. Why is that couch still here? You know, call back. Uh, <laughs> professional comic. Yeah, your boy. <laughs> so, like, I, I, like, if we've gotten this far, like, yeah. who knows? Who knows what's next? Mm -hmm. I think we could be bigger than Men in Blazers. We're certainly better. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> See, there is. Right? <laughs> that one guy is Funny. like, ah, oh, he's so angry. <laughs> it's like, I should have hit him, you know? He's thinking about it right now. He's probably divorced from that woman, right? And he was like, I should have, why did I even listen to her then? I know I didn't love her. Um, <laughs> I hope you're happy, dude. I don't know who you are. <laughs> um, like, I, if we've gotten this far, that just tells me there's more. Because we're only, what, f we're a little under five years in. Right. Dog, there's got to be more. Right. What are we going to be like when we're 10 years in, you know? Yeah. Christian's got a coke problem, right? <laughs> right? My wife has left me, right? And so she mysteriously dies, right? And it's not my fault, right? I wasn't there that day. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. You just nodded everything. It's very confusing. <laughs> hey, man, anything can happen, man. <laughs> I know. He was like, cool, we're going to kill his wife. <laughs> like, he said the most heinous shit, and you were like, all right, what else? Yeah. what else? Five well, what years, do you think about years? content? You know? <laughs> hey, man, we appreciate you coming through. Absolutely, uh, man. Yeah. Uh, any last 
last words to the, the fans and supporters out there? Uh, thank you for uh, all that you guys do. Uh, you know, whether it's downloading this or downloading Cooligans or subscribing, which we're all going to do right now. Um, the audio still comes out. The audio of the show comes out on every Wednesday. We still haven't missed a Wednesday. So you can listen to us. You can watch us. You can do whatever you want. Thank you for everything you do. Even if you hate us and you mention us, that's still engagement, my guy. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Thank you for every time you've said our name in jest or in hatred or in love. It means the world to us. Appreciate it. Appreciate you coming through. And thank you guys for watching the Urban Bitch Podcast. Beautiful game of life. Please don't cut out the cut out the part where I'm gonna kill my wife. <laughs> <laughs>